Hello, and welcome to our pres presentation titled Business Planning, Unlock Your Potential. Today's presenters are myself, Mark Dunsmuir. I'm a Director of Pursuit Advisors and I run the operations team here. Also run workshops on this topic. Today's other presenter is Stuart Kendall. Stuart is a Senior Advisor of our firm and is our Product Development Leader. Stu also runs workshops on this topic. Welcome, Stu. Uh, thanks, Mark. Uh, excited to be here and, and happy to get things underway. So I'll run through our agenda for today um, to talk to all, bit, all about the importance of planning to really unlock that potential in your business. So if you, um, well, as we're going, if you've got any questions, please type them in the chat panel and we'll have time at the end to go through these. So our agenda today is we're going to work through the purpose of a business plan. We're going to give you some tips on best practice and some key items to consider. We're going to demonstrate um, our template and well, the one that we use here for our planning sessions go through some questions and then plan out some next steps for you guys to take it home. Okay, so I'm gonna talk about the purpose of a business plan. And I wanna make a distinction here. A business plan is not a strategic plan. A strategic plan is a longer term document, usually looking at a time frame of five to seven years ahead of where you are now. A business plan, however, concentrates on the next 12 months. Now we do believe that every business plan business should have a strategic plan, as this will drive a lot of the content within your business plan. But today we're just gonna discover business, uh, cover off on business plan. So review and set the direction of your business. If you don't know where your destination is, how do you know you're gonna get there? You've really gotta consider what does your business look like in 12 months? You need to identify and prioritize your key goals. Don't just chase the shiny objects or what you're good at. Do the things that are necessary in achieving the direction you have set for your business. Create strategies to achieve your goals. Essentially create a project plan. Think about who needs to be in the project team. What are the key steps? Are there any blockers? And how will you monitor the project? All key items in terms of choosing a goal and then achieving that goal. Don't forget to set time frames for achieving your goals and be realistic. And if you need to, break tasks down. So for example, if you wanted to increase sales by a million dollars, what are your targets throughout the year? Don't just set a target for the end of year, create smaller targets, for example, quarterly. Use your business plan as a basis for you to set team members individual goals and targets. So what we're talking about here is set your team's KPIs and critical drivers against the budget. You will achieve your goals quicker if they are aligned as it's gonna help drive your team behavior. Perfect, thanks Mark. So for us, um, best practice and the care I'm consider to start with these, these points here. So the first one for me is, as Mark suggested, those cascading 90 days goals and actions. A little while ago, Paul and I ran a seminar about 30, 60, 90 day goals and using smart goals. So if you've got time, go back and have a look at that, um, revisit that one. But really what they outline is a roadmap to what we want to achieve. We're not leaping into a new business, it's a gradual build up of our current business. There's no magic bullets in planning. Uh, it's all that application and hard work. And it's easier to take a small first step uh, than it is to just jump straight into to huge changes. So a, a big distinction for me is that a dream written down becomes a plan, plan backed by action becomes a reality. So that's where these uh, 90 day goals and actions become really important. The second one there is no more than five KPIs. So you really can't manage what you don't measure. Uh, it's, and it's critical that there are measures in place across your business um, for those really, really important aspects. Again, uh, Steph and Paul ran some content a little while ago. So it's the different cogs in your business that turn generate outcomes. And each one of those cogs will have a, a behavior behind it that helps drive things across. So we pick five measures so that you're not bogged down in measuring things. It's really easy to go from measuring nothing to measuring far too much and you spread yourself too thin. So you end up with you know, measuring things like vanity metrics, which might make you feel good, but aren't necessarily a true reflection of is your business being profitable? or you end up with KPIs that aren't actually showing what you think they're showing. So if you think back to Lisa Simpson's rock that keeps tigers away. Um, so on that front, it's an aim small, miss small sort of method. You pick five key items that need to track and you build your KPIs around them. Right. Uh, third point there is share with your team for alignment. So as Mark mentioned, your business plan can be the basis to set individual team members, goals and targets. So. We really want to hammer this one home because alignment between yourself as, as a leadership team and the, the rest of the team around you is what builds a uh, culture of success. All right. So your team success, or if your team success equals your business success, then that's going to be a greater chance of everything overall working out for everyone. 
um, you've got people working f- uh, with you, not just for you. Okay, so you, you give your team something you really want to rally around and really strive for. You know, keeping it visible for us is why we use our, our template as a one pager. Okay, so I see a lot of business plans uh, that people put together for a bank, finance, or for planning permission for the council, and it's a 15, 20 page document. Um, now, that's, that's often as far as they go. They'll sit in a drawer or they'll, they'll take up some space in your Dropbox, but they're not something you live and breathe every day. Right? So keeping it visible um, is, is a snippet of the really, really important things that you've got, um, visible across your team so they all know what we're trying to achieve as well. Uh, and it's a, a real guide that way of where you want to focus your time on. So here we use what we um, a, a distinction or a, a tool called the Eisenhower Matrix. So you may have seen that. It's got important up one side and urgent down the other. And it helps you identify between what's important and what's urgent. So your business plan is going to serve the same purpose. Is what I'm doing right now helping me reach the key projects and key goals um, for the next 12, business, uh, next 12 months? And if not, are you the right person to be doing that task? Um, so put it up on a wall or somewhere you can see it regularly. And then you know it's there to leverage back on for all your decision making. The last point there is to review it quarterly with someone independent. So... Most people have a touch point at least quarterly with their finance, fun- their finance function. Uh, so, you, you know, that might be your BAS or, your BAS or GST or um, reflecting on a budget. So our advice is to take that opportunity to review your plan every time you're sitting down with a team who process the numbers for you. It's a good opportunity to check in on your 90-day goals, um, the numbers and any opportunities or um, vulnerabilities that might have addressed themselves in that last period. Right? We live in a world now that changes so quickly, so you want to give yourself every opportunity to pivot and change plans before you get caught out. And you want to pick someone independent to do that so that you really push to achieve those goals. Um, It's really easy to not put yourself first when things get really busy and you you get caught up in the doing of the day-to-day and not necessarily focus on those really important projects that are going to drive you and unlock that potential over a 12-month period. So the gym gym buddy in this instance is the perfect example. It's, uh, It's a lot easier to skip the gym when it's just you. If you've got someone you meant to go with, you're letting them down as well. So you're we, are, we recommend finding a relationship that really works for you, someone who won't go too easy on you and someone who likes to listen to you. So maybe sometimes a spouse isn't a good example. Um, and you want to find someone who's going to really help you drive towards those goals. So what I want to do now is work through our template. Um, so across the top here, we've got some really important parts that um, form part of a longer-term party business, but they're really important to think about when you're making 12, uh, 12 month plans and goals. So that's the purpose, the what business we're in, the what we want to achieve, and our values. These here really allow a snapshot of what your team want to align with. Okay, so you show them on the annual plan to make sure that those actions um, and projects in this plan are consistent with the long-term strategy of the business. We then got uh, to the right-hand side, we've got our KPIs, which are the, the key performance indicators we mentioned before. List them out there, make sure the entire team's aware of them. You've got on the left um, your budget and five-year numbers, so gross profit um, or whatever the best reflection is there. That We use those ones as an example, but whatever works for you as a budget, so it's really clear what you want to achieve, and not just in the next 12 months, but then also flag the five-year numbers. So as Mark said, put a small steps in place to get from one to the other. We've got our ideal client and our value proposition, so that allows us for targeting your clients, and um, it passes the message off onto your clients what you can expect from your brand. Below that, opportunities and vulnerabilities. So that's uh, and including our most critical challenge. So that's to keep you really aware of the key um, aspects of your business that are happening right now, things you have to address, things you have to work on, and things we uh, want to take advantage of when they uh, when they arise. Uh, the final section there is our projects. So this is clear accountability um, on the 90-day actions, who's going to deliver that action, and what the expected outcome is going to be. So for this, this ticks off all the important parts of the business plan. Um, and we use it regularly with our clients. So now uh, we, we normally put this out on a, an A3 page uh, and have it nice and visible with some uh, some cool logos and whatnot over it. But on that, we'll open up some questions for anyone who might have some uh, some things they want to go through or some questions that have arisen so far. Mark? Yeah, 
And to reinforce what Stu showed you there, we really do like to keep it simple. It's really all about being visual, as Stu really pointed out there. So it looks like a simple document, but the real power is in the in what you put into that document. Now, if you do have a question, um, there is a chat feature, as Stu pointed out earlier, you can put your question into. We do have a couple which I'll get a start on. And the first question is, how much time does it take to complete a business plan? So once again, I'll make a distinction here. Um, a strategic plan, which is a five to seven year document, can take up to two days to put, to put together. When we talk about a business plan, um, presuming you've already got a strategic plan set up, a business plan should take half a day to one day, really depending on how deep you go into that section. So half a day to one day of uninterrupted time. So when you're sitting down and making a business plan, Try not to do it at the office or the or the business. You're just going to get interrupted. Turn off your phone and really concentrate and be in the moment. It also works a lot quicker if you can actually have participants do some pre-work prior to the meeting. Now, Stu, we've got another question here. Is a facilitator necessary in creating a business plan? Uh, yeah, thanks, Mark. Um, I think, yes, in, in a lot of instances, a facilitator is really necessary in creating a plan. And that goes back to that accountability. So the point I made earlier about um, it, it is easy to go um, it's easy to go easy on yourself at times and not focus on that really long term strategy. So I think having someone in the room to help you build this plan, put it together, and really cover off everything that's important is a really important part of the planning process. So that's a tip for me. And another thing is that if if you're in the business and you're facilitating it, then you're really not participating and you can spend too much of your time trying to uh, to facilitate the process instead mm. of actually participating and putting your comments and your thoughts in. Yeah, exactly. Now we've got another question here, which I'll take Stu, which is where does 10 hats fit into this? So um, those of you who uh, attended the session that Stephanie and I did uh, last month, we talked about the purpose of 10 hats in the organizational chart. Now, where do 10 hats fit in? So for those who weren't part of that process, 10 hats is essentially is a concept that we use to say there are different roles in your organization. So there are roles like sales, like marketing, like operations, et cetera, et cetera. Now, where we find 10 hats fits in is if we go back to the projects, uh, the projects that you define in your 12 month plan. Uh, what we find works really well is if you define a project within one of those hats, one of those roles, you're gonna know who's gonna be in charge of it. So we find the 10 hats process really does fit quite neatly into the business planning process. Uh, now, Stu, we've got one more question here. Um, I might get you to take on which is, can I still go through this process if I don't have a budget? Would you like to talk to that? Yeah, sure. So um, budgeting is an incredibly important part of figuring out where your business is gonna go over the next 12 months. So, uh, it's, it, and for me, it's a really, really important part of a plan. It, and it's, it's the basics of the, the finance role, really. So if you don't know what you wanna achieve from a financial point of view, it's really hard to know if the plans and projects you're gonna put in place, they're gonna have the cash flow to fund them, uh, are going to deliver the profitability you want uh, and are going to tick off all the things that you really do need to achieve. So I would say that um, a really, really important part of having a business plan in place is creation of a budget. Okay. Thank you. Hand in hand. Thanks, that's true. Uh, okay. So it looks like they're all the questions that have been asked. Uh, Stu, you can take on the next steps. So next steps for us is um, you, you can take a real DIY approach to this. So we're happy to share our template with everyone. Uh, just send us an email, we'll flick it across and you can have a go at plugging the information in as you want. Uh, we're also putting out the offer there to run a half day workshop if we get five businesses who are keen to, to be involved in that process. So that's getting in a room together, uh, going through the key things you need to put into that and then helping you uh, as long as, as well as helping each other facilitate the creation of that plan. That'd be uh, an investment there of $800. Or we can do it one-on-one, -on -one, which is what we do with some clients already, which is a half-day workshop with just you and your business, a facilitation. There's a little bit of pre-work involved, and we go through that process to sit in a room and nut out every single one of those aspects of the plan, um, get it all on a page, and have some projects you guys can take away, take away from there. So any, if any questions about any of them, please feel free to contact your advisor or, or the office. Now, guys, um, 
coming up, we will be sending you out a survey um, to all of our client base. We just want to find out what support you're going to need post JobKeeper. So we'd really love to hear from everybody who receives that survey. It's going to help us shape what we need to do in your business. Yeah, fantastic. So yeah, we'll send that survey out and be in touch with it soon. Thank you all very much for attending today. Um, any questions or comments on today, please feel free to give us a call in the office or email through inquiries. Um, it's been great talking to you all and we'll speak to you all soon. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Ace.